Hi, welcome to the EHR Usability Tutorials. In this section of the series, we'll be talking about expert review or here heuristic evaluation. As we walk through the stages of how to complete heuristic evaluation, we'll begin by talking about the definition and the history of heuristic evaluation. In the next video sequence, we will look at some of the specific principles. And finally, there'll be a hands-on activity. The learning objectives for expert review include understanding the benefits and limitations of expert review, here heuristic uh, analysis or evaluation. We'll describe usability heuristics or the guidelines behind them, and then we'll walk you through step by step how to perform a heuristic evaluation. What is an expert review? Well, heuristic evaluation is often referred to as a discount usability evaluation technique. Um, what that means is basically it's used to identify major usability problems in a very timely, and cost-effective fashion. Um, you walk through an EHR and other forms of IT or any kind of product really, and using expert review or heuristic evaluation, you simply mark off what's wrong about the product. So one of the benefits of this system is it's very quick and very fast. Uh, one of the problems with this type of evaluation is it never tells you what's right about the system. So when you're done, you're only left with a list of problems, but not a list of strengths. Um, other types of evaluation um, such as formative user testing would give you more information about how people uh, process or walk through the stages of a given task and how the design changes you're making have affected that performance. So if you do iterative testing, you might see changes in time to completion, which would give you some notion of the progress you're making. Whereas expert review is intended to basically compare whatever your system currently looks like to standards of good usability or good design principles. So it's only going to find out how you don't fit those principles rather than how you do succeed at that. Um, how you complete an expert review is basically you need two to five evaluators to walk through a system, again assessing it to, so, to a set of known guidelines and marking out the problems as they emerge. Independently, you come up with your two lists. You then merge the lists into a master list where you have a comprehensive evaluation of the system and then you send those uh, the conjoined list back to each of your evaluators and ask them again to independently rate the severity of that problem. When you're done, you then sum the individual scores of severity to give you an average rating across that problem. The reason why you need two to five evaluators, everyone looks at problems a little bit differently. We each have different bias in how we're actually assessing a system. Having multiple evaluators allows you to capture multiple perspectives and having independent rating of that severity allows you to see how severe a problem is across individuals rather than just from the mindset of a single individual. So for example, I may have um, significant issues with any kind of memory demand and I rate memory demand problems as being very severe. Another individual might have a different view of memory issues and look at them in each different context and have more variability within their scoring. Summing our scores together gives you a different impression than looking at the individual reports from either one of us. Um, additionally, when you're trying to create an expert review, you have to figure out where in the life cycle you want to complete this review because each life cycle will have different components of the product available. We suggest that you need to start immediately when you have those wireframes to start identifying where problems might arise and fixing them early on so that as you move through iterative design, your system builds and builds rather than having to go back and recapture those ideas in a different format. Um, additionally, there are guidelines for how to do expert review. Um, the NIST EHR Usability Protocol Documentation, NIST 7804, walks people through how to do this type of evaluation. Um, they suggest having a multidisciplinary team of human factors experts as well as clinical experts compare um, the current design of an EHR system to specific design principles and standards to identify the risks that could occur. One reason why they suggest having both the human factors side who may be more aware of memory demands or cognitive uh, principles that may be violated as well as the clinical experts is that the clinical experts will be better able to understand the workflow of how you're moving through this system and moving through various screens, as well as being able, better able to understand the content that's presented on the screen. Additionally, when you're setting up your heuristic evaluation, one of the things you have to decide is not only who are your evaluators and when are you going to evaluate, but what are you going to evaluate and what components of the system are you going to use. 
For example, you could move screen by screen through every available screen in the system, and you'd have to figure out a way to organize that. Are you moving through the system as it's designed through some sort of navigation architecture? Are you moving through the system based on the screens necessary to complete a specific task? Are you following an optimal workflow? Are you following actual individual performance of end users in the system, including all the interruptions, those sorts of things. There's lots of different ways to split up how you decide what screens you're looking at, what are the sequence or order of those screens. In terms of the history of heuristic evaluation, you're going to find that there are a wide range of labels for types of heuristics. In 1987, uh, Ben Schneiderman had eight golden rules for good interface design, and here you can see his eight uh, rules, including things like strive for consistency, permit easy reversal of action, reduce short-term memory load. In 1990, Mollick and Nielsen developed a set of heuristics used for interface design. In 94, Nielsen refined this to his 10 major heuristics called the Nielsen heuristics. So you see that that reduced short-term memory now has become things like um, help and documentation, visibility of systems, those kind of language. Um, in 2004, Dr. Zhaoji Zhang, who gave us the TURF framework, also redesigned Nielsen Schneiderman's heuristics for a fit for medical devices and HIT. And then in 2012, NIST summarized all of these in their own EHR usability protocol and procedures and have now created yet a different set of principles for heuristic evaluation. Um, each of the different Standards um, covers roughly the same territory. It's at different levels of granularity with different kinds of information entailed. So the difference between um, help and documentation being carried across the last two here, but not in the first, was an additional expectation 30 years later. Um, good error messages you can see actually coming through in a number of places, those sorts of things. So um, heuristic evaluation can take any set of these design principles. It depends on whichever set people are most familiar with. Uh, you'll find different ones in different places and they're simply reported out as part of the methods.